the fast inverse square root. One of the most notorious pieces of code out there, with its own wiki page, and even a shout out on XKCD. How, in any way, does this algorithm compute the reciprocal of the square root of its input? This is the curve for 1 over the square root of x. If we take a sample of points computed from the algorithm and overlay them, this is what we find. It's dazzlingly accurate. In order to focus on that magic number, let's comment out the Newton's method step. Regenerating the set of points, this is what we find. It's not as accurate to be sure, but it's still very close, is it not? How is this possible? Here is a small program. The function show IEEE754, which I lifted from Stack Overflow, plus a few additions of my own, prints the float and its bit representation to the screen. For an input of 100, we see how the bit representation breaks down. Note the exponent and the mantissa. Let's think about the exponent. If the exponent's big, the number will be big, and vice versa. To a certain extent, the number is dominated by the exponent. In fact, that extent is to a factor of 2, since 1 plus the mantissa is a number between 1 and 2. To focus on the exponent, I'm going to start with another number, one without a mantissa. 16 works. I'm also going to comment out our magic line. The idea is to somehow come up with it on our own. Now, 16 is a good number to start with because it has an even exponent. What difference does that make? Well, if we could somehow take that exponent from a 4 to a minus 2, we'd have the inverse square root. To be sure, dividing the exponent by 2 is the same as taking the square root, and negating it is the same as taking its reciprocal. How can we go from 4 to minus 2 in this case? Well, if we take our exponent and shift it the length of the mantissa, we can play with it. So let's shift it right to 23 bits of the mantissa and subtract the bias. This is our exponent. To have it, we can divide it by 2, or we can shift it to the right one bit. It's the same thing. Then, we can multiply it by minus 1, add the bias back, and shift it left 23 bits to put it back in its place. And what do we get? 2 to the 4 becomes 2 to the minus 2. We're getting somewhere. Let's regenerate our points and plot them. We see we have the correct result for numbers that have even exponents, 4, 1, 0 0.25, but that's it. After all, the mantissa gets blown away by our shifting, and odd numbers in the exponent round down so we see the same value until the next number with an even exponent. Well, at least we're on the board. Okay, so what now? My first thought was to extract the mantissa and I guess add it back, but this led me nowhere. Upon closer inspection, perhaps we can simplify and rearrange this. After all, shifting x bits to the left is the same as multiplying the number by 2 to the x, and to the right, it's dividing by 2 to the x. Let's see what we get. We get 1.5 times 127 times 2 to the 23 minus our number shifted one bit to the right. Okay. Let's plot this and see what we get. Whoa, it's close. It looks similar to the plot of points with the Newton step removed. I was not expecting this. I mean, we didn't talk at all about the mantissa. On the contrary, we were blowing it away. Check this out. This is what our float looks like. 1 plus m is a number between 1 and 2. 
which is also to say between 2 to the 0 and 2 to the 1. The mantissa by itself is a number between 0 and 1. Does this mean we can represent the factor 1 plus m as 2 to the m? It doesn't seem like it, but let's take a look. Between 0 and 1, the two curves are actually quite similar. They're the exact same at 0 and 1. And the difference seems to give the most error at around 0 0.5. But still, it's pretty close. So if we can approximate 1 plus m as 2 to the m, if we shift our float one bit to the right, well, we're also shifting the entire mantissa to the right, which is the same thing as taking the root of the mantissa, just as we're doing for the exponent. Since we're inverting the entire number by subtracting it from n, we arrive at the inverse square root. Okay, I still have a few questions. First, what about the exponent when it's an odd number? Wouldn't that mean we're pushing a 1 from the exponent into the mantissa field? It does. So how could this work? Well, pushing a 1 into the mantissa means adding 0 0.5 to it. This can be written as the shifted mantissa multiplied by 2 to the exponent 0 0.5. Rewriting and simplifying, we see that this does indeed allow us to half an odd number. To me, this is the crux of the genius here. It's in the design of the IEEE 754 standard itself. So it is 1.5 times 127 times 2 to the exponent 23. It's the hexadecimal number 5F400000. Pretty close to the original 5F3759DF, the difference being a fraction of a percent. But still, why is there a difference? To find out, we need to go back to our approximation graph. As mentioned earlier, it seems the biggest difference between the two functions, that is, between 1 plus m and 2 to the m, is at around 0 0.5. Close to 0 and 1, the error is very small. It turns out, if instead of approximating 1 plus m as 2 to the m, we use 2 to the m plus 0 0.043, we can minimize the total error. If we rewrite our approximation with this error term and do some rearranging, we can get back to our original form, but with our bias offset ever so slightly changed by the error term. And so what is 1.5 times 126.957? times 2 to the exponent 23, the hexadecimal number is 5F37BE76, extremely close to the number in the original function. I hope this has been able to shed some light on the genius of the IEEE standard and the magic behind the fast inverse square root algorithm.